This channel has been going down south for years, but today we're finally going north with this new case from Fractal. As you can see, it looks a little bit different. It's a bit minimalist. It's a bit more, um, feng shui. So today, I thought it'd be a fantastic idea to actually build the most tasteful upmarket gaming PC you can build in 2023. Almost said 2022 there, it's getting to me. It's all of that caffeine. As always, we're going to be showing you the full build process from start to finish. We're going to show you what's hot, what's not, and of course show you those all-important gameplay benchmark numbers so you know exactly how this thing performs and whether this is a gaming PC that you should be building in 2023. So find out absolutely everything you need to know where hopefully we don't drop anything else right after a short word from this video's sponsor. AlphaSync is the place to get the pre-built system of your dreams. Without any knowledge on how to build a PC, AlphaSync gets you top branded components at all budgets, lovingly put together right here in the UK. Either choose a master crafted AlphaSync specification or design yours from scratch. The choice is entirely up to you. Get your game on today with that link down below. So yes, all white gaming PC, brand new Ryzen's, brand new Nvidia, pretty much everything. But the star of the show is this, the Fractal North. This has actually arrived today. I was genuinely so excited. I thought I wanted to make a build on it straight away. Now I do want to say that this is not sponsored by Fractal. So if this is bad, I will be telling you that it's bad. And right off the bat, it's quite clever because you can actually mount some fans to the side and have this in a whole different configuration to your average gaming PC. But that does mean that this is a little bit more modular and there are quite a few different bits and bobs that you need to take apart before you can actually get involved and start building this. But let's take a proper look at this then. Obviously the main thing that stands out is the wood on the front and this is actually very nice to the touch. It's almost got like a glossiness to it. It's properly sanded down, varnished, sealed. I wouldn't say there's any risk of me getting any splinters. It's a tiny bit more rough at the top but they've done a very very good job of having this easy to handle shall we say without necessarily risk of injury. I can't guarantee this will be on yours but I'd be amazed if they weren't very uniform and consistent. Around the back there's not actually that much in terms of cable management but I do like how you have a decent sort of cut out and groove along the side here. So as long as you're not doing anything too over the top, I think you'd be absolutely fine. You've got these tight end points over here. You do have a fan hub at the top, no RGB, but I think it's fair to say that this is not necessarily gonna be an RGB less rig, but it's not as important because the case itself does the talking, especially bear in mind the side of this is mesh rather than glass. I'm not sure if you can get a glass panel for this. It's definitely something I would love to see. Again, editor Carl, can you look on the website for me? Okay, it's good that they offer it. Moving to the top of the chassis, no surprise, you've got more mesh here. It does come in black or white, by the way. I think the white one looks better, but obviously it's down to personal preference. Then you've got USB in type C flavor, two type A's, and then headphone, microphone separately, and then this very upmarket looking fractal button. So yeah, definitely a very slick, very cool looking chassis. But if you don't like the wood finish on the front, then there's not really that much else going on with this other than the side ventilation that makes this really stand out. The motherboard that we're using here today does aim to keep the price down a little bit. This is the ASUS Prime X. 670-P. It's not one of the extreme versions, but I don't think most people need all of the extra Gen 5 support. But if you think you do, obviously you can step up to that, but be aware it is extra cost. Taking the motherboard out of the box, I think it is definitely quite obvious that it is a bit more of a cheaper motherboard. I don't think it's going to matter to most gamers watching this. It definitely still looks quite nice. Just be aware if you're going to pump loads and loads of voltage into your CPU or buy like a top-end Ryzen 9. This probably isn't the one I'd recommend. In fact, I'd actually recommend that you go for a non-X version of the one we're using here which is a 7900X because you're going to save money and it actually runs at a lower power draw so you don't need to worry quite so much about having brilliant cooling not only on the motherboard but actually on the physical chip itself. Let's plot this down on the overhead so you can see this in all of its glory. I think the main things you need to be aware of is that this is a DDR5 only motherboard. It's not like Intel that you can pick between 4 and 5 so if you're upgrading or just buying new memory obviously please do be aware of this. And then also that this M.2 slot at the top this does support PCI Gen 5 I think but this graphic slot here does not so if you're going to want to use this for years and years while you can't upgrade the cpu please be aware that i don't know if you miraculously need a gen 5 graphics card in like six years time you will be losing a little bit of speed with this probably but it's definitely not an issue at the moment the question that you're probably asking yourself though is if i'm recommending that you go for a 7900 rather than the 7900x why am i using a 7900x well it's actually pretty simple it's just because i don't have one yet so it's going to be interesting to see how this performs i think you can get slightly more performance but in all of the reviews i've seen oh don't do that 
beware of pingback. In all of the reviews I've seen, the performance does seem to be pretty neck and neck. So while the X might perform better, especially if you are gonna give it a lot more power, most gamers would probably be better off saving the money and going for the non-X version, buying a cheaper motherboard and have cheaper cooling because you're not really missing out on much. Wait, wait, stop the video. Stop the video, I'm done. It's too hot in here, it's too hot. Maybe I shouldn't have worn a thick woolly jumper. The eagle-eyed viewers amongst you may have already noticed that the AM5 mounting hardware has been removed. I did this before the video because I didn't put it away properly and I didn't want to do it again, but it's just four screws to remove that. But you will also need some DDR5 memory, and this is Corsair Vengeance RGB. They've actually sent this out for a sponsored video that will be coming up, which is pretty cool. But I should say that this is actually an Intel XMP kit that I imagine will work absolutely fine, but for best compatibility, going for an AMD Expo set is probably going to make a whole lot more sense if it's not that much more expensive. This is what the overhead was made for, look, some RGB memory unboxing. Not really that much to see. But crucially, as you can probably already tell, it is white. So when we put this in slots two and slots four, giving it a good click in place, I think you agree that it forms a very nice looking motherboard combo. But of course, it's not done yet. We will also need the final piece of the puzzle, which is our SSD. This is the KC3000. Like all of these parts, it has been sent out by the manufacturer, but I have seen some pretty crazy deals at the moment where you can get a one terabyte version of this for under hundred pounds. It is super fast, PCI Gen 4. You can't get Gen 5 at the time of filming. AMD said it was coming in what, like November? Where is it? Where is it? Maybe they meant November 23. Disclaimer, I don't think they did. But actually getting this installed is very, very simple. Just use a slightly smaller screwdriver and remove the slot cover. Grab your new drive and then just drop it into place. Secure it with this little clip. Make sure the thermal pad has its protective cover removed. Then you can just put this back on and screw it into place. Right, we are officially cooking on gas and there's some evidence that I do clear up a little bit around here. Let's get this in there. And this is exactly what the overhead camera was made for. Well, I don't know, maybe Blackmagic actually had better ideas and more creative things than building PCs every week. But hey, this is a lot more fun. So we will just line this up with our back slots. Oh, oh really? Okay, I said this was a cheaper motherboard. I didn't realize there wasn't actually an IO shield on it. That is basic, isn't it? And even the IO shield looks basic. I mean, this is very 2003, but installing it is very, very easy. Just make sure it's lined up correctly and then just push it into place. There we go. Pick up your system again and lay it underneath your overhead camera. Grab your motherboard and just gently line this up with the holes. Then you can remember that you haven't actually got the screws out from the hard drive cage, which is something I tend to do way too much here. I'm just too eager. But once you do have your screws, it's very simple. Just plop these in and get it safe and secure. Pretending we haven't just done this, you can now stand it back up and you can really start to see what we're trying to do here. We've got black and white elements throughout. I want this to be as white as possible, but as a motherboard, pretty much will always have black components on it. It's nice if you can get it to tie in properly. We do also have these two fans at the front and I'm really hoping I don't have to remove these because I do want to just put the radiator at the top and that is going to be the next thing to do. <gasps> it's Mickey Mouse! Fractal have accidentally made the world's first unofficial Mickey Mouse sponsored hard drive caddies. And if you didn't catch a glimpse earlier, the all-in-one we're going to try to use today is from Fantex. This is the Glacier One, 240 miles per hour. Don't think it actually stands for that. Oh, and there is something absolutely terrible about this that gets me every time, and that is the smell. The recycled cardboard of this is honestly some of the worst I've ever come across. It smells like it's decaying. I mean, maybe it is. But as you will see when we take it out of the box, this is definitely a very attractive bit of kit, and it should be more than enough for performance that you need for the non-X version of the CPU and I think even this X should be okay but be advised that all of these Ryzen X CPUs do like to turbo their temperatures to around about 90 to 95 degrees just to maximize the clocks. But if you haven't guessed, fundamentally the reason we're using this is because it is all white and you have these little halos as well so we can add a little bit of illumination to the inside of our rig and just make it a little bit more alive. So the question on everybody's minds is, is this going to fit? I mean it should do. Yeah, I don't see why not. Let's try it with a fan, just so we can see. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Grab your fans and then place them on top of the cooler, making sure you're blowing into it if you want to use it as an exhaust, or if you're doing it at the front, probably an intake, so have it in the reverse order. You want to grab the long screws for this and just feed them in and screw each one into the radiator mount. 
Although I've done it again, haven't I? I've done it again. Good thing I noticed now. We need to actually get these RGB fan halos on as well. They just sit on top and the screw goes through. You'll also need to plug the fans into each other. When you're done, it should look something along the lines of this. So we will need to take the top off of this chassis. Just slides off like that. We give it a spin round and make sure all of the connections that need to go at the top are plugged in straight away. We have USB 3, HD audio, USB C, and then a couple of fans. So we'll plug these fans in now just to make our lives a little bit easier. Actually, I think we'll plug all of them in. So we've got USB 3. There's actually a fan header underneath it that we'll use for our fan hub. Remembering that both of our front fans we will connect up here so we can control it all with one header on our board. Power switch and power LED at the bottom right of the motherboard. And then because I think this is gonna get pretty tight, I'm actually going to plug in the CPU connections at the top now with our modular power supply cables. We have an eight pin and a four. And then hopefully the not so tricky bit, actually screwing this into the top. I need to feed these cables around the back first. I don't know why they don't give you more cutouts at the top. That is a big missed opportunity. So strange, why wouldn't you do that? I, I guess they're not expecting you to use radiators really at the top, just fans, but even so, why? But here comes the moment of truth. That RAM is about as borderline as you can possibly get. This is not the most radiator friendly case. Why wouldn't you just make it taller? I, I don't really understand. I mean, I get that it is meant to be used differently. It's a different sort of case. How difficult would it be for like that much extra on the top? No one is going to notice. I don't think it's gonna make any real difference to the price either. Add that, add a cut out on the other side and this would be much better. Spit in pure facts. So definitely a little bit tighter than I'd like, but that's not going to stop me. Instead, we're going to press on and install the AM5 mounting hardware into the motherboards. Then you can grab the thermal paste that comes in the box and just add this on top of your Ryzen CPU, decent size in the middle. Then you can pick up the pump head and just gently lay this over the top, then it's just a case of using the thumb screws to stop this from falling off and keeping it safe and secure. It's going to be absolutely impossible to show you, so you're just going to have to pretend that you can see. But you have this little four pin pump cable that goes into the one that says AIO pump, and then the one that we tucked away earlier for the actual fan speeds for both of these onto the one that says CPU fan. Then you've got the fun bit of actually placing the pump top on this. It is magnetic. Just make sure the tubes are facing up enough for this to sit on. And then you've got more cable routing to do as this goes around the back. I hate radiators. We're actually making pretty good progress because it is now time for the penultimate part, which is our power supply. This is from Be Quiet. It's brand new. It's the Dark Power 13. I think it's slightly overkill for this rig. Not so much in terms of wattage. Obviously, we're not going to use 850, but it's nice to have a little bit of overhead if we want to upgrade to like a future graphics card that uses more. But just more because this is very well built. It's designed to last. It's very efficient. You can even overclock this as well. And obviously, not everyone needs these features. So if you're trying to save yourself a little bit money maybe look at something like next level down like the straight power i suppose or any other non be quiet power supply of course but in terms of cleanness i think grabbing one that has a pci 5 connector is going to make a whole lot of sense going forward to get this installed we need to remove this little back plate fan facing downwards and then pop this on top grab the four screws that come with the case or the power supply and fix her down remembering to grab those cpu cables that we plugged in earlier Make sure all the cables are fed through and then push this into place. Is that gonna fit? No, we're gonna have to remove the hard drive cage. It's quite a long power supply to be fair. Then we can grab our two remaining cables and just feed these through to the respective places. ATX at the top, PCI Gen 5, at least for the time being, at the bottom. Awesome, I think there is just one more component to go, which is exciting. And it is, on the floor, a brand new one from Colorful, or iGames. This is like a sub-brand, I guess. Hopefully this means you'll be able to get hold of this for a little bit cheaper compared to some of the competition. But the reason we're using this today is not only because the 4070 Ti is very powerful, despite the whole price drama. If you want to know what I think about this card, top right corner, I explain everything. But of course, because it is white. Oh, okay. That looks good. Look at this. You're going to love this. Check it out. It is quite rectangular, but in quite a cool way, actually. It's almost like a mix of modern and old. Pretty smart. It's actually got probably white fans as well, so it is gonna mix in with our build nicely. But yes, it is weirdly rectangular. It says Ultra down the side. Here's our Gen 5 connector. And okay, I've just seen the top. It's actually pink. 
It's white and pink. Tell me that's not cool. It's definitely um, not the most Western card in the world, but I think that makes it stand out and look pretty damn cool. Let us remove slots two and three. Pick up our RTX 4070 Ti and then just line this up with the slot. Oh, it's triple slot. It's triple slot. Maybe remove three covers. Then we can try that again. Lining this up and giving it a good push till it clicks into place. That is a smart build. There are just two more things to plug in, which is the graphics card itself. Please make sure you're clicking this in all of the way. Give it a good push until it's definitely safe and secure. The final thing for us to do is going to be to actually plug in our ATX. And then boom, there is our Fractal North rig. Not cable managed, but complete. You can see there's actually not much to do around the back at all, which is nice, but if you're gonna go down the route of adding loads of RGB fans with something like Corsair's system, where you've got loads of extra boxes and things, that's when it's gonna get a little bit messy. I think this will be very, very easy to tidy as long as you've not got too much. Bear in mind, if you use a long power supply as well, you're gonna lose a hard drive cage, but this is pretty standard in the biz. And speaking broadly about the build process, I think as long as you're not going for a top-mounted radiator, there's not really anything to complain about. It's just as soon as you wanna put things at the top, you're missing a hole, there's not that much space really at the top to work with. So compared to most cases actually, it's not really going to be the most suitable, but that's not really the point of this case. I think actually, if I was doing it again, I would strongly consider going down a more air cooler route or maybe having some extra fans along the side. But bear in mind that this is a very thick graphics card. I mean, look, if I line this up, you can see here that you don't actually have that much clearance. So I'm not entirely sure whether you wanna do it with this exact GPU if you're going down the big bulky route. But I think this is gonna look pretty good. We just need to power it on. So I grab ourselves a 4K monitor, the one and only PC-centric mouse mat. Link for this is down in the description below. And then I think a mouse, keyboard, power cable, missing piece of the computer. There we go. And then the moment of truth. We have lights, we have camera, and we have action. I mean, there's not actually that much going on for the graphics cards. You've got this very subtle RGB where it says ultra. That actually a lot of people will like, but do bear in mind, as soon as you put the side panel on, you're not gonna be able to see a lot of this anyway, which is why I say it'd be nice if there was a glass panel for this. But regardless, hopefully we get a signal and we can start testing some games. Oh, I haven't plugged it in. That would, <laughs> that would do it. Yes, we've done it. Always takes a while with Ryzen builds, but Get there, it shall. We're enable Intel XMP, which on AMD platforms on ASUS motherboards is labeled as DOCP, as it sort of converts the timings for AMD. We wanna make sure resizable bar is on, which it is here by default. Make sure everything is set to silent, and then we'll save and exit. And I think while we're doing that, it is time to put the side piece on and see what she looks like. I think mesh side panels are making a massive comeback and you can see why, because it actually looks a whole lot more interesting than most rigs that we make on the channel. I really liked the Asus Prime version of this. You can find that video in the top right corner of your screen actually, that was a micro ATX motherboard. And you can still get a rig that looks great, but one that has more ventilation on the side that, especially for bigger, more powerful computers, can only be a good thing. Oh, I wasn't sure if it was gonna do it then. That was a long boot time as we went for XMP, but I think it works. So I'll see you in the benchmarks. Welcome everybody, it is here, it is all set up and we are ready to go. And I mean, let's just take a little bit of a closer look at this rig for a second. I have to say, it really does stand out and I can see why there's been a lot of hype around this because if you are after something that is a little bit more tasteful, then clearly this is gonna fit the bill. I have done a little bit more research for the when you can actually get this in a temper glass version, which I think is gonna appeal to a lot of people, but it depends what you're gonna put in this because realistically, I think a 4070 Ti is definitely something you could get in a glass panel without any issues at all but obviously if you're going for a 4090 or maybe a graphics card cooler that's a bit more inexpensive so it's not quite as efficient then that's when having extra ventilation could definitely help out your temperatures but I think what we've got here is going to appeal nicely to a lot of people let's play some games and here we go kicking off with everybody's favorite some Warzone 2 this is running at 4k with DLSS set to balanced mode I think everything else is about as high end as this could possibly be let's jump out of the plane and see where our FPS can be and immediately you can see we're getting around about 100 FPS, which bear in mind most people aren't actually gonna be playing at 4K, I think is very impressive. You can't always drop the DLSS down to performance. I don't think it's gonna make too much difference, to be honest, if you're running on this sort of high-risk monitor. Of course, it all depends on the monitor that you have though, because what we're running here is actually 4K 120. So I would argue this is pretty much getting the most out of this monitor. If you're using DisplayPort, you can go up to 144, rather than HDMI that's limited to 120. 
So yeah, probably performance mode, DLSS, 4K is probably the way I'd play this on this screen. But what if you're playing at 1440? And immediately you can see an increase to the frame rate. We're now getting about 140, 150 FPS. I am getting a little bit of stutter now. I'm not sure whether this is because we're sort of on the limit of the CPU. We're starting to hit a bottleneck there or whether it's just because the recording software or anything like that is making it chug slightly. But this is still a very, very good experience. It's just one that you're going to sort of notice the limitations of your system when it comes to the CPU, or on most games that isn't really gonna be an issue with a 7900X. Or a 7900, sorry, if you're following this rig and all the recommendations, you wouldn't get the X version. Hang on a minute, is that right? I know the side panel is off, but are we really only 42 degrees on the graphics card? Or is that just like a miss measurement? I mean, let's see what happens if we put the side panel back on, shall we? We'll also turn this down to 1080p so you can see how this performs at a slightly lower resolution. You can see the frame rate isn't really increasing, which does sort of testify the fact that you are getting a CPU bottleneck. But in terms of our GPU and CPU temperatures, they're still ridiculously low. So if you are after a case that is going to do you very well when it comes to thermals, clearly the Fractal North is a serious one to consider. Oh, that's not the enemy. That's not the enemy. Oh, no. I don't know how this works. Next title. And of course, the one we have here is Halo Infinite. This is running at the Ultra preset, and this is running at 4K. No DLSS or anything fancy like that here. This is pure rasterization. And the CPU is still quite important, as you can find in my latest video, actually, that I did comparing the Ryzen 7600 versus the 13400F. That was with the 4090. It was actually pretty interesting. But as you can clearly see here, it doesn't look like we're running into any bottlenecking with around about 96, 97% GPU utilization. Interestingly as well, by the way, it does seem that the graphics card has warmed up now. So I think that was just an error reading before because about 61, 62 degrees is very, very good. That is uh, more in line with what we'd expect. Let's have a look what happens if we turn the resolution down to 1440p. And indeed, an increase we do get with around about 135 FPS. It's worth remembering, by the way, that you can, of course, turn the settings down from Ultra if you want to be super competitive, which I'd argue most people probably will want to. But obviously, if you're maxing out the refresh rate of your monitor, then you can afford to turn the settings up a little bit. It's all about multiplayer, it's all about the way the game feels. And let me assure you, on this 120 hertz monitor, it feels brilliant. And then, of course, just for due diligence, we'll play this at 1080p, and we're just, just starting to see a little bit of CPU bottlenecking now with around about 170, 180 FPS, but 94% GPU utilization. I'm not expecting anyone to be buying this PC and playing at 1080p, but if you want to or need to for whatever reason, then rest assured that it's gonna be a very capable card. Pressing swiftly on to video game numero number three, we have our ray tracing title. This is Cyberpunk 2077. This is actually running at ray tracing ultra, so this is the dream way to play the game, really. This is running at 4K with DLSS set to performance mode. It's a little bit annoying that we still don't have the update for DLSS 3, so you will get an even higher frame rate once the support for that comes out. But in the meantime, you can still enjoy a frame rate that is so much better than you would have got from the previous generation. This is where the latest NVIDIA architecture does come into its own. I know it's very controversial in terms of outright rasterization performance, but if you are a fan of ray tracing, or at least you want to be, then clearly this is a very good graphics card for the whole next generation of gaming. Whether you buy into that is entirely up to you. Let's turn the resolution down to 1440p though and see what that does to our FPS. Immediately the image quality has of course decreased, but you can see our frame rate has significantly increased. If we're being honest, I think most people would rather play the game at 100 FPS if you had the ability to do so, despite the fact that the image quality isn't quite so good. But when DLSS 3.0 support does come out, you can have your cake and eat it, I suppose. The latency does increase ever so slightly, but to be honest, not enough to mean that you shouldn't turn it on. I think the whole tech actually works surprisingly well. While Cyberpunk currently does not support DLSS 3.0, at the time of filming, Spider-Man does. And this is actually running at absolute max settings, 4K DLSS with this new frame generation tech, ray tracing enabled, and as you can see, we're getting a pretty magical frame rate of around about 80 FPS with everything turned up. That is not too shabby. We are getting a little bit of stuttered there as I say that, which is very ironic. Don't ask me why. What I'm gonna do is turn frame generation off because what I think happened there is that we were getting a CPU bottleneck and the game basically fell over itself with the frame generation when it didn't really need to be on. Um, our frame rate is now about 60 FPS, so it has gone down, but we've pretty much got rid of all of those stutters entirely. So don't ask me what happened there. Something weird. 
Let's turn frame generation off and we'll actually disable the ray tracing just to help our CPU out so we can see what we can get as a max FPS. And what does that do to our frame rate? Actually nothing. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna call it. We've got a buggy install here. I don't know what's going on. If you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comment section below. Spider-Man, Spider-Man stutters a lot because he can. But anyway, this has been the Fractal North build. What do you make of the performance, the way it looks, the slightly quirky chassis? I think the white theme really does work a treat here. We've created something that definitely fits the build, is very tasteful. I'm a little bit surprised that I've been able to tune this as well as I have as well. I was originally thinking maybe to go for a different cooler, one that actually uh, regulates the fan speed based on the internal fluid temperature rather than having to do it yourself. But as you can see, this PC is basically silent even when it's running a game flat out. So in that respect, it is very, very impressive. But the question goes out to you on this. What do you think? Would you get something like this yourself? What do you make of the GPU, Nvidia's tech, stutters? I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything in this rig, or to grab yourself a PC-centric mouse mat, then you can find all of that stuff. Link is down below. And while you're down there, be sure to check out AlphaSync. AlphaSync brings you a worry-free PC gaming experience with a huge huge range of custom-built gaming PCs. With a 4.8 rating on Trustpilot and free next-day delivery available on selected builds, why not let AlphaSync take all of the stress out of PC gaming? Get started today with the link down below. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and we'll catch you in the next one.